So anybody that has followed my videos for any length of time can tell you I really like hiking. And anytime I'm not hiking, I really like diving. I would be diving right here at the moment, actually, other than conditions have been really, really bad. Anybody who's gone scuba diving any length of time, especially uh, beach diving, can tell you that cleanup tends to be one of the biggest challenges. It was hard enough when I had an apartment, I had a spare bathroom where I could put all the stuff, but these days, of course, we live in this van in a local campground. Uh, that has necessitated a couple of changes. One of the biggest challenges is honestly, because we live in this van, this van has wood um, and it is a living space, we don't want to have salt water anywhere near it. It's wood inside and uh, salt water just makes an unholy smell and mess. As a result, I haven't found a good solution for being able to dive while I only have this, which is one of the primary reasons I still have my Jeep. I have seen one good solution for diving out of a conversion van, and that was somebody who had a custom-built Sprinter, and they actually had in the back a whole little uh, kind of closet built with its own ventilation all around dive gear. That was really cool. I sent a picture and I told Taters if we could ever afford a, you know, $100,000 plus uh, conversion van, that's totally what we would get. But, you know, we're, we're dealing with the uh, Craigslist cheap version here. So the first thing is gear transportation. I had this before I moved into the van, but uh, this Rubbermaid bin is just perfect. So after you come out of a dive, you're covered with sand. No matter what you do at the beach, you're always gonna have some sand and it's hard to get all the salt water off. Uh, the only way I've found to really get things clean is to fully immerse everything in water. And that's what I use this bin for. Now, sometimes I'm lucky and I'm diving with somebody who lives fairly near the dive site and they don't mind me coming over and using one of their hoses, but most of the time I'm stuck either using a faucet at the campground or else in the case where we are staying at a campground that does not have water, I've got to find a beach shower or something like that that's publicly accessible. So I'll use one of those, fill it up about, oh, you know, halfway, a third of the way, wash everything, lay it out to dry, dump this, clean it, dump everything back in. The next problem then becomes, how do you dry things? When I lived in the apartment, I actually had a wetsuit dryer, which was amazing. It's basically a fan that blows down into the neck of the uh, wetsuit, and it can actually dry a wetsuit overnight versus taking days. However, out here, that's not an option. I could put something out in the sun, but sun will destroy a wetsuit. And especially with the cold water out here, I want my wetsuits to last as long as humanly possible. So I had to find a solution. Things like this campsite, I can usually put it in the shade, let things drip dry. Of course, that means I have to be here, but I did find something that works even better. So this is a dry pro bag. It was actually a gift from a friend of mine. Um, it basically lets you put a wetsuit inside of it and it ventilates. It can be left out in the sun so it heats up, but it doesn't expose the neoprene itself to the sun. And then the very bottom is waterproof. So any water that collects there can then be let out with this little plug. I've been relatively happy with it, though honestly, I do wish it was a little longer. You can see that no matter what I do, uh, at the bottom, it's not quite long enough for a full length, you know, head to toe wetsuit. I will sometimes put a hood or other things in here to dry. Um, I'm generally less worried about those pieces because quite frankly, they're cheaper. You know, these are hundreds of dollars. If I need a new hood, it's less of a thing. Uh, so those I'll just have set out somewhere and if I have to have them in the sun. Uh. In my experience, that plug is probably the weakest thing about this. I wouldn't trust it completely. If I have it hung up in the car, I usually have it under a bin or something. So that's how I go about washing and drying things, and then I either store it in the bin or uh, we have a storage locker. These rigid toolboxes are something I bought at Home Depot. They're a relatively recent acquisition. Uh, I saw somebody else posting about them. I'm like, huh, that, that makes a lot of sense. Because basically it started to accumulate so much loose gear that I was always having like bits and pieces in storage or in the wrong place. So um, this basically holds my camera equipment and this holds pretty much everything else. There is a third piece that was at the bottom that you can buy. They all sell them separate. And the person that I'd seen post about them put all their neoprene and everything and fins in that. That seemed great because then you could roll it out to the beach. However, it wasn't big enough for me, so I just stuck with these. So the top one is pretty much all my various GoPro bits. I have a backscatter uh, tray and lights and all the miscellaneous chargers and things. And then this is kind of the general junk pile. 
The other thing I really like about these is that they snap together for easier transport. The downside is you see with the bin, I don't have a ton of room back here. This is usually where the tanks go. So these two things going in the back, go in the back seat. They're a little bulkier, but so far they are the best thing I found. Since I've been diving, I've always wanted to share, you know, pictures and now video uh, because I have family members that will never get anywhere close to being able to see what's down there. And I became a really, really big fan of the GoPro. I had an Olympus TG4 before this. The fives and the sixes are uh, nice for pictures. Uh, the video on this was a huge upgrade from my old TG4 though. But GoPros have one major, major downside. GoPro batteries suck majorly. So why do they suck? Well, um, they don't last very long. So I generally have to use two batteries for uh, a given day if I'm doing two dives. And if we're doing a longer trip, I have to have a whole bunch of them and I have to keep them charged. And the charger is kind of flimsy. I've tried a few of them and I keep coming back to the first party little uh, GoPro charger. But even this, it's often pretty hard to get the battery seated in here. And I've had these go bad. They're just not really high quality. So my current solution, other than just buying a whole bunch of first party batteries, because any of the third party batteries I have had have not lasted near long enough, either, you know, individually and they wear out over time, is this thing. It's made by a company called XTAR, and it is basically a charger uh, similar to what the iPod Pros have in that it has a battery pack inside of this box. So basically, it just gives me some extra charges without having to have access to a wall plug, which I often don't, or, you know, have a running car. Uh, the batteries seat inside here, you close it up, and you get an indicator light going on here. It can charge the batteries a couple of times. I'm still kind of uh, coming to terms with how much extra capacity it gives me, but generally it's given me enough to stretch out a day of diving into a couple of days. It does mean I've got an additional thing to charge now, but when I plug in the GoPro batteries, I basically, this has a USB-C port and this goes into the wall, charges up. And I will say for the record, this thing feels a lot higher quality than uh, any of the GoPro charger battery chargers that I've used so far. And while we are on the topic of GoPro limitations, again, very nice video. I really like many things about this, but in addition to the batteries sucking, trying to get videos off of this, especially if you have, you know, 30 minutes of footage with plus a couple of dives is really slow. Yes, you can connect with your phone and download them, but that is very, very slow in my experience. So I did find something at last that works way better. So the GoPro uses one of these little itty bitty SD cards and if you have an Android, you can probably read one of these directly with the iPhone, which is what I use, you're more limited. Enter the Apple camera adapter. It's basically got a lightning plug on one end and it has big and little card readers on here. Uh, this works really well now because modern iOS devices have the file app. So what happens is you plug this in. Um, this is actually a third party one. There's one made by Apple, which is a little more reliable. I wasn't hundred percent sure it was going to work though when I was looking into it because not many people seem to be doing exactly what I'm doing. But basically when you plug this in and you launch the files app on your iPhone, this will appear as an external drive. You can go in, you can then select the videos and copy them to your phone. Sounds really basic. Uh, it does actually have some quirks to it though because it doesn't show a copy status. It's Apple, you know, they tend to go with clean interfaces that don't show a lot of information. So I select all the videos and I copy them and I basically just have to not touch it for about 10 minutes and all the files will be copied over and they'll be available in my photos app. At which point I can copy them into iMovie, do whatever I want. This thing literally turned getting videos off of my phone from an hour plus horrible process into something that, you know, basically takes the drive from the uh, dive location to whatever coffee shop we're going to. So this is massively more efficient than trying to copy using Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Biggest downside is that the video files come across with uh, date and time from the GoPro, not from the phone. So they appear out of order when I'm combining it with videos from my phone that I shoot while I'm on the shore. Obviously this is a work in progress. I'm always kind of looking for new things to improve. It drives Jen absolutely nuts because, uh, you know, I'm constantly stopping myself from buying new gadgets and things. So, um, if you have tried anything and actually have like firsthand experience with something that's worked or you've just seen something really cool and you're like, Hey, maybe that would help. I'm always all ears for hearing about that sort of thing.